The world is racing to fast-track a COVID-19 vaccine for emergency use by next year. It would normally take more than 10 years to develop a vaccine that is both effective and safe. Will a new vaccine be both of these things? By the end of the year, we may have a readout on at least one of the vaccines currently in the pipeline that it you know, may protect or, or may not protect um, populations against COVID-19. The bigger question around safety is, you know, do we actually have enough safety data from you know, basically a study that was six months long? And you know, we're, we aren't gonna really be able to tell. Some 200 vaccine experiments are in progress around the world, and about 15 are already in human trials. Do you think, though, that by the end of this year, we could have a vaccine that perhaps my mother or father who are in their 80s could have safely? So that's a tough one. I, I think that several of the vaccines that are now um, either entering or are said to be in the third stage, the efficacy stage of testing, um, look potentially um, interesting. They make the right protective responses. They all protect monkeys against infection. We don't really know though. And, you know, we've been fooled before. Um, certainly in HIV, we, we have had times when we believed the monkey model, uh, but it was not borne out in humans. I think the first to the line may not necessarily be the ones that work. The first, the dengue vaccine got licensed, but now we know that it cannot be used in those who have never had dengue before. You can only use in those who have had prior dengue infection. Um, and sometimes, you know, we don't know enough to be able to predict all these outcomes. One recent breakthrough has been made at the University of Oxford. Results from vaccine trials involving more than a thousand human volunteers have shown a strong immune response. But typically, safety data is collected over years of testing before a vaccine is released. Does that mean, therefore, that when we push out this COVID-19 vaccine, it's going to have be less safe in that sense than vaccines that have been around for a long time? Uh, we will have less uh, long-term safety information than we normally have. So I think, you know, as vaccine developers, we really need to commit that we will follow the people who receive vaccine and placebo for a much longer time than we would normally do. You know, say, 12 months, we would commit to following them for two years or three years or longer to make sure that there isn't something you know, that's going to be there at a very low level that we really should be aware of. Here's how the normal time frame for vaccine production is being cut short. Research usually takes two to four years. It's now being reduced to six months. Preclinical preparation involving animal testing from two years to now six months clinical or human trials, from up to five years to as little as 1.5 years. Approval for use by authorities, from one year to six months. Manufacturing, from two years to three to six months. Let's pretend that the vaccine is found tomorrow, Mr. Jain. How soon could Indian pharmaceutical companies actually ramp up production so that all of us could actually get immunized? I don't think even in two to three months' time, it should be available in a shelf where everyone can use it. Uh, the capacity at the moment is limited. Uh, although the companies are trying to ramp up the capacity, uh, it will take time for production and distribution. So even the vaccine is discovered tomorrow, I think it will take around 12 to 18 months' time when anyone who wants it can have. 12 to 18 months, that takes us into 2022, Mr. Jain. Absolutely, because uh, even if we do the best, I don't think we can see anything earlier than 2021. A vaccine also doesn't mean full immunity from the virus. How much protection would it actually give us? The issues around it are whether or not it gives sterilizing immunity, that is, it stops you being infected altogether, or whether it just protects against disease. And the data that's been released so far indicates the latter, that it only protects against disease. So the problem with that would be that someone who is vaccinated could still be infected and could then spread the virus. So it's not the perfect solution. We don't know how well this virus changes. We don't know how long immunity will last. We might have to accept that the first vaccine that is uh, 
put into human use for COVID-19 might not be perfect, might not even be able to prevent infection, but if it could prevent severe disease and if it could not uh, have a major adverse effect, that's already good enough. And we might use that in the very high risk groups, for example, elderly, those with underlying diseases. It's not yet a take home that we have a vaccine that's going to come out, that's going to be the answer. We have to still keep our guards up as far as social habits, public behavior. It's absolutely important that we do not lose track in that regard.